y'all so it is thursday morning at like it's 3 30 in the morning and i wanted to start a vlog i look horrible i know i look horrible my eyebrows horrible hair horrible face horrible i have not felt good at all i spent all night last night throwing up i mean just like and not the normal vomiting that i do i normally just dry heave and maybe some acid will come out but i mean i have been actually like full on vomiting. I think I have a stomach virus. I'm really in a lot of pain tonight. I haven't vomited, but I'm in a lot of pain. To try and get through this on my spring break, I am reading. So I've been reading You by Caroline Kepnes, and I'm almost done with it. I'm on page 375, and I am so pissed off right now in this book. I can't even comprehend how angry I am. And I don't think this is spoilers, but I really don't think it is. Basically, this whole book is about a man named Joe who is stalking a woman named Beck. So he's been stalking her the entire book. It's like so creepy and they like know each other. They're friends and they like date on and off in the book, but he is like full blown obsessed with her. She's at his apartment right now she apparently decided she was going to kind of snoop through his stuff and found his secret stash of stuff that she has so there's like her underwear is in this used tampons are in this box her emails are in the box so many personal things that anybody would be absolutely mortified to find in their significant other's apartment and he is sitting here saying, I am just so offended that you would violate my privacy in this way. You snooped in my house and literally violated my privacy and you don't even see how wrong you are. Says the man who has her underwear and used tampons and her personal emails in a box in your apartment, but he has the audacity to sit here and genuinely think that she's wrong because she went through his stuff. What? He is, and he's so serious. Like this is all narrated in second person. So it's like the reader is the one getting stalked. He's literally sitting here just absolutely pounding her, telling her how wrong she is, telling her that she shouldn't have violated his privacy. And then what else did it say? Oh, and then, He's like had her phone. She lost her phone in the beginning of the book and he's had her phone this whole time and she hasn't shut it off. She's just kept it on like she hasn't disconnected it or anything. He's had her phone the entire time and she finds out about him hacking her email and everything and he literally says like not to her but in narration he's like this is your fault because you didn't shut off your phone so that's on you you getting your emails hacked by me and me reading all of your emails that's on you that's not my fault i didn't choose to do that you made me do it by not shutting off your phone this mother is a literally bat crazy i just cannot deal with this right now i'm getting angry like actually angry right now and I don't like the woman he's stalking either, Beck. I think she's a bitch. I don't like her. I cannot stand her. However, I don't think that anybody deserves this. I don't know. But I'm going to continue reading it. I'm going to finish it up. I'm pissed. I'm angry. But I'll be okay. <laughs> I'm just going to get through this. But I will update y'all after I'm done. Let y'all know my feelings. And I will see y'all later. Hey y'all, so it is the same day, but it's morning time, like actual normal people morning time. <laughs> it's like 10.30 in the morning. I just wanted to tell y'all what I thought of You by Caroline Kepnes. This book, I don't have like a straight, like I don't have a, an, like an, a formal opinion about it. I'm very, very like, I have mixed feelings. There's the right word. Sorry, I'm not doing well. <laughs> but, like four hours of sleep and I'm not doing good. This book, not the best that I've ever read. It started out that way. I really was loving it. Like I thought this was gonna be a five-star read for me, but I did not like the ending. 
I have it at a four right now, so it's not like it's a bad rating because this was a good book. Overall, it was a really good book and I really did enjoy it. However, the ending really bothered me and I'm trying not to let that affect my overall rating because overall, the book, like right now, if, it, if I just had to like go off the ending, it would be like a 2.5 out of, or a three out of five stars. And I'm trying to make myself not go off my emotions based on the ending. I'm trying to look at this book as as a whole. As a whole, it was like a four star with the beginning, the middle, and the end. Because the ending, yeah, I didn't like it, but this still wasn't a bad book. This is not a two star book. This is not a three star book. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? My emotions based on the ending, I'm like, I want to give it a low rating just because I do not like how it ended. However, like the author took a risk. I'm not mad about it. It's just not how I wanted it to end. I will say this book is full of unlikable characters and I don't mind unlikable characters. There are certain circumstances where if the main character is unlikable, I don't mind it. I actually think that makes my enjoyment of the book better because this particular person is unlikable. Like in Vengeful, for example the main enemy, the the woman in that book, and Victor and Eva, like all of the, the, the people in that book except Sydney are unlikable people and but you love them. So and it makes the book better because they're unlikable people. This book, the main character Joe, I found myself sympathizing with more than what I personally would have liked to because I mean he's a stalker. He's crazy. I mean he's he is real crazy. He really needs to get some help. I think like he, he, I mean, I don't think I know he needs some help. Like he needs to go to a hospital, something. He, he's very deranged and very sick and something is just off. I mean, not so, like everything is off. However, he at times was more likable than other people in the book who you're su supposed to feel sorry for. The main character, Bex, or Beck, I did not like her <laughs> at all. And there were so many times where I liked Joe more than I liked Beck. And I feel like that is so ass backwards and I feel really bad about that. And I think that's also contributing to how I'm wanting to rate this because I feel wrong about my feelings. I feel like I should hate Joe and really, really love Beck and just feel so horrible for her that she's getting stalked by this man. But then I'm also like, she's a horrible person and her her pers her just her personality is awful like I don't like her <laughs> at all and Joe even though yes he's got such bad problems I feel like at the core of his very soul he's not horrible I don't know I, I ugh, it's so conflicting and I'm glad I'm not the only one who has this problem there are so many people in the reviews that have read this book and had the same exact thoughts that I did like really sympathizes with Joe, thinks he's not a horrible person even though he's so so sick. And then like the, his victims, you like don't like them. <laughs> like it's so crazy that I'm wearing clothes by the way. This is like a yeah I looked naked I realized and that shot. Sorry about that. So he like kills people in this book. Like I mean I don't feel like that's a spoiler or anything. I feel like you're going into a book a, a horror thriller novel and you know that people are gonna die. I won't say who dies, I won't say who he kills, but basically every person he kills, you like low-key don't care that they're they're getting killed because they're, they're also horrible f people and you like when they would get killed I'd be like oh well okay whatever bye like <laughs> I know that sounds horrible and I feel bad for thinking that, but it's the truth. Like these people, like that's how you know this whole book is just full of unlikable characters because like when you don't care if the antagonist kills these people, it's just kind of proof that things in life are never just black and white. There is always a gray area. And to me, Joe falls so much in that gray area. Like to me, he's not good he's not evil he's i don't know i can't describe him at the end i hated his guts but then it's like he has this switch that goes off where he's fine and he's sympathetic and he's so in love with beck but then he can hate her and like 
just say the most obscene things like what I said in the first clip. I stalked her like full-blown stalker for months, six months, just because she walked into his bookstore. And because she wasn't wearing a bra, he said she wanted it. What the f Like, this is, this is rape culture at its finest. Like, this is what rape culture is. Guys thinking because a woman wears a tank top or a woman doesn't wear a bra or a woman wears a short skirt or short shorts that she wants to be taken it like that she wants to have sex and that's absolutely not true like just because a woman wears those things that does not mean that we want to have sex with you or that we're asking for it it's so stupid to me and to me in my opinion and i feel like this should be everybody's opinion if a woman is standing in front of you buck ass naked and she says no it's no. Like, would you honestly ever teach your son rape is bad, but if she's standing in front of you naked but still screaming no, or if she has short shorts on but she's still telling you no, you can go ahead and have unconsensual sex with her because she's wearing inappropriate clothing. Would anybody actually ever teach their child that? And if you would, you're a very f up human being. If you honestly would would tell me that you would tell your son that that's okay. No. No. Because I hear stuff on Facebook and shit all the time. Well, women shouldn't wear certain things if they don't want to be raped. What the f- Do you teach your son that? Do you tell them, don't rape a woman unless she's wearing provocative clothing. Unless she's wearing skimpy clothes. But, yeah. So, I'm going to read something else now. I'm done with this. I think I'm gonna keep it at a four. Like I said, hated the thing. And I wanna watch the, the TV show, but I also don't. There's a second book to this, and I understand the ending because there's a sequel. Like, I do get the ending. Sorry, my mama called. This clip is already, like, all together gonna be 15 minutes, and another 45 minute vlog, probably. I have my TBR from the TBR jar, and I really need to start another book from this. Like, I've got it right here. I need to start another book from the stacks. I've got People Like Us. I've got Never Not. I've got It. I've got Misery. And I've got The Other Mother. I'm thinking right now that I'm going to pick up Misery. Actually, I'm going to bring these three books. I'm going to bring these three books up with me. People Like Us, Never Not, and Misery. I will still read other books throughout the month. However, I want to at least have something going from my TBR stack at all times because I would like to read You Was on the TBR stack, so I've already got one book completed and that feels really good. I never give myself TBRs because I never follow TBRs, but I really want to try. <laughs> to try and at least complete maybe two or three books from the TBR stack. That's a good start for me considering I never ever have TBRs. And I'm also thinking about getting Bear Town because I've been wanting to read this lately. I've been wanting to kind of read like a hard hitting story, but I just don't know what I want to read. I'm also started The Final Empire. I'm on like page 70 of that. I've got The Cruel Prince that I still need to read. I want to read The Last Time We Lied as well. And I've also been wanting to read If We Were Villains. And this is in my favorite style book. It's like a long book paperback. I love these types of books. We'll see, <laughs> but I'll update y'all the next clip, so. Bye. Hey y'all, so it is a while later. It's actually, I think it's like 8.30, 9 o'clock maybe. I am reading right now People Like Us. Like I said earlier, this is what I was gonna pick up. Um, my dog is crying because my mama is chopping up mushrooms and um, he really wants some. Jack, seriously. He apparently didn't used to lock mushrooms, but he has had a change of heart. He loves them now. I think we're starving. Yeah, you, you think that we literally never feed him when he eats too much, but he's a glutton. What can we say? Jackie Joe! What a need! Does he think you need the mushrooms? No, him don't! So I ended up after I was stopped to vlog a while ago, I read uh, like 20 pages of this 
Then I fell asleep because like I told y'all, I've been very sick. I feel incredibly nauseous right now. I want to throw up more than anything, but I don't think I have anything left to throw up. So yeah, I've picked this back up again and I'm on page 30. So I just have read 10 pages, but I just read something that is so obnoxious to me that I had to talk about it. The main character's name is Kay and I'm just going to hold up the desk jacket. Uh, it's lighter than the actual book. She is the main character and they all go to this very uh, prestigious private school. And Kay is a scholarship student. She got a scholarship there because of sports. She has a game that she is going to, that she had to do on a Monday. And this was a really important game because there was going to be scouts there for college and she needs the scholarship to college or else I don't think her parents can afford to send her to where she needs to be sent. She's like a very popular student. There's six of the girls in this group. I think there's four like main girls. They're all very, very, very popular. And I'm pretty sure they're very mean. They were all going skinny dipping after a dance because it's like a tradition that they do. There's a lake on campus and they go skinny dipping there. They all live at school, by the way, they have dorms and everything. So when they're going swimming in the lake, one of the girls, Brie, found a body in the lake. And it is a woman, obviously, this is an all girls school. She has slits on her wrist from her wrist down to her elbow. And she's obviously dead. And right now they're saying it's a suicide but they're investigating to make sure there was no foul play, which obviously there it's a murder because this whole story is about a murder mystery. So, uh, but they haven't discovered that yet. But I just got so irritated because Kay was talking to her parents about how practice was canceled and how the game on Monday was canceled because of this student's death. I mean, she died, they're investigating it, they had to cancel all school events. Her parents go on a, just just have a conniption about the whole thing, saying how unfair it was. You need to call somebody and make this happen. This is way too important. And Kay's like, mom, somebody died. Are you kidding me? Like, what do you want me to do? There's somebody that's dead. And I had faith in Kay. I really was like, Okay, she has sense, she's a sensible person, she has a heart, but then she hangs up the phone and says how everything's ruined and how angry she is about it, and then she says, damn you, Jessica Lane, which is the name of the woman who died. She says, damn you, Jessica Lane, like, damn you for dying. She was homeless, and I'm pretty sure she was a scholarship student as well. I mean, obviously, she's homeless. There's, She couldn't have paid for that tuition by herself. Right now, it's suicide, but even so, Suicide is so incredibly just painful. For her to react that way is just pathetic and awful. And then on top of that, we find out later that she gets murdered, which she has absolutely no control over that. Like some monster killed her, but damn her for getting murdered. Like damn her, like, are you kidding me? I just was so pissed off and I can already tell that I'm not gonna like these girls because they're just a bunch of preppy, rich, privileged people who just think that the world revolves around them and that anybody else's life is irrelevant and I just mm, I cannot stand people like this so I'm not excited to read about these bitches but we'll get through it I'll be okay I'm gonna continue reading and I'll just update y'all later so yeah bye hey y'all so sorry the lighting is horrible it is Tuesday morning it's like 9 30 and I just got a package and I'm so excited. It is my book of the month package. I am just now signing up for it and I ordered two books and there they are, I'm so excited. And I wanted to show y'all what I got. I thought it would be kind of fun. So since this is my very First month of book of the month. I'm just excited. So book of the month, by the way, this is not sponsored. I'm not like a getting paid or anything or have any sort of like affiliate link. I'm just, sorry to get the packages. Don't have an affiliate link. I just saw this on 
YouTube on, I think it was Chelsea Dolling Reads. I just thought it would be really, really fun. This is the book of the month package. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> it's only $15 a month to uh, have this and you get new releases. So like, I looked at the prices for these new releases and one of them I think was like $28. And then another was like still around the $20 range. So I got basically two books that would generally be around $40 to $50. I got it for $15. And the shipping was free, so that was great. But I got. And then I'm going to tell you how far along I am in People Like Us. And then I'm going to end this vlog and start a new one because this vlog is very long. Here is my book. It says Book of the Month right here. And it just kind of opens like that. So I get a book of the month pamphlet, which I'll go through just a little bit. It smells good. <laughs> I love the smell of new books and new pamphlets. It's so weird, I know. But And then I've got this little thing. I love the color. This is my favorite color, what they have. One of them. And, ooh, I got a bookmark. Cool. The first book we have is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote my very favorite book of the year last year and one of my favorite books of all time, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this is her new release and I'm so excited to read it. I want to read a lot more Taylor Jenkins Reid. I already have the book After I Do in my room and I have several more books I want to get from her, but I'm so happy to have her brand new release. This book is $27 is what it says inside, and I got a $27 book, so that's the first book. I'll tell you what the total is after I show you my next one. The new next book I got is Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson. This book I also read is a book, The Kind of Worth Killing, last year, and I really like that book as well. I gave that one a four out of five stars. I really like Peter Swanson's writing, and this is a new book of his, and I'm really, really excited to read it because I love thrillers, and I just think this will be absolutely fantastic, so I'm so excited. This book is $26.99, so basically both of them around are $27 so that is a total of $54 around $54 with tax probably 60 so I got two books for that are would have been $60 at the bookstore for $15 so that's a really really great deal I am just so happy about this and on the top it has the book of the month symbol and that's just so cool to be. So I'm gonna go put these on my shelf. I also have some books coming from De Book Depository and I'm really, really happy about that. Hold on, Jack, I'm gonna go grab People Like Us real quick. I also have the book People Like Us. I am on page, I'm on page 140. So I am getting good and along in this book. I would love to finish it either today or tomorrow. It's pretty good so far. It kind of is reminding me of Pretty Little Liars. There's like an anonymous person sending like, I don't know, emails and like messages to this girl, the main character in this book, Kay. And she has all of these secrets about her and their friend group. And then like, there's even a girl that's like not very popular and people consider her a loser and she's getting threats, kind of like Mona in Pretty Little Liars. And this is, this anonymous uh, person is using the woman who died her name. So the woman who died's name is Jessica Lane. And this anonymous person is signing Jessica's name to all of these threats and these little like messages that Kay is getting. So I find it a lot like Pretty Little Liars. It is reminding me exactly of Pretty Little Liars. And I love that show for the longest time. I remember at like season four, I wasn't liking it very much anymore because it was so repetitive and a lot of the same stuff happened. And I don't know, it was like the same shit, different episode for seven seasons. So I kind of just got tired of it at some point. I still watch the entire series. <laughs> But, uh, well, actually, I don't think I watched one season. I watched the final episode, and I literally, I stopped watching 
I think around halfway through season six. I, I said I stopped at season four and I did, but I decided to watch season five and half of season six. And then I stopped watching half of season six. And then I decided to just pick up the last episode of season seven. And it's like, I didn't miss anything at all. <laughs> I caught up very fast, like in within the first five minutes of that episode. And I was caught up and fine. Like I didn't even miss a season and a half of the show. So yeah, that just proves that it's very, very repetitive. But this is exactly what this is reminding me of though. But I'm still enjoying it. I don't think it's like a five star read right now. Maybe that'll change, but right now I'd give it like a 3, 3.5. So hopefully it gets better and maybe I can read it like a 4 or even a 5 maybe. But yeah, I'll just keep y'all updated in the next vlog. So if y'all want to know uh, my thoughts on this book more and my final rating, you can find out in the next vlog that I post. So yeah, but I hope y'all enjoyed this vlog. I'm sorry it's so long. Please like this video if you want to and just subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see y'all later. Bye!